What's up everyone, Takedown here, welcome back to another video. Today I am actually really excited because I have been requested to make this video, reviewing this online quiz to help people prepare for their firearm safety course here in Canada. So if you guys remember me with my CBSA journey, the firearm safety course is something that I needed to do because to get into CBSA, I needed my unrestricted and restricted firearms license and I needed to take this course. So I ended up taking the course in February 2019. Prior to this, I had no experience with guns, I've never handled firearms, and I literally had no knowledge of firearms. In June 2019, I basically uploaded a video sharing about my experience taking the course here in Canada, my experience handling guns for the first time during the course, and basically talking about everything that I learned during the course and how my time taking the three-day course for unrestricted and restricted was. That video ended up helping quite a few people, at least people that have never handled firearms that are trying to get this for future career opportunities as either uh, police or CBSA or other law enforcement agencies. A lot of people that have never handled firearms going in to take the unrestricted and restricted firearms course, a lot of people are really nervous. So I'm really happy that that video has helped quite a few people. And for this video here, I have been requested to make this video basically reviewing this quiz to see if it's relevant with what you will learn taking the course and if this will actually help people that are kind of nervous going in and not knowing what to expect. Hopefully this quiz will help, but we're gonna find out and we're gonna get right into it right now. Okay, so the link to this quiz will be in the description below. There's a total of 52 questions, which is way longer than what I wanted, but somebody actually requested me to do this. So I'm gonna to try to do the questions as fast as I can, but with also giving you guys information. So we're just gonna start off here. I'm gonna to try to go as quickly as I can. Uh, using a firearms safety guarantees that the firearm will never accidentally fire. That is false. Uh, problems can occur, things can break. That to me is a common sense question. Uh, the first step to prove a firearm is safe is to remove all ammunition, observe the chamber. I'm going to say point in a safe direction. That is the first thing that you learn whenever you try to prove a firearm is safe. Uh, when you prove a firearm is safe, you're determining that uh, the firearm is unloaded and safe to handle. As far as I remember all this from taking the course uh, over a year ago. Uh, which of the following steps apply when accepting a firearm from another person? Uh, making sure the action is open and check the chamber. Um, point in a safe direction. I'm going to say all of the above because all of these sound good, which is correct. Okay. What lies beyond your target is relatively unimportant when hunting, as long as you are sure you can hit what you're aiming at. That is false. You always need to know what is behind your target, just in case you miss or the bullet goes through. The first rule of safety when handling firearms is to assume every firearm is loaded. That is correct. Which of the following is an example of a break or hinge action firearm? That one is extremely easy for me. If you've never been around firearms, this is gonna be a difficult question, but you will learn it in the course. So it's, it's stuff that is really easy once you get shown it in the course. Uh, what information does this stamp located on the barrel indicate? Um, the size of the bore and the ammo. Okay, so gauge and length of shell. So basically what I said. Uh, sight alignment means you're aligning the rear sight with the front sight and the target. That is true. The sling carry is also known as the cradle carry. Um, now I can't remember the, cra uh, the carry positions, but I'm pretty sure that's two separate carries. So I'm going to say this question is false. Correct. A sling carry allows the hunter to use the sling to handle to hang the firearm off the shoulder, that is correct. The sling carry should only be used with the right shoulder, not necessarily, it depends like what you're comfortable with. Uh, the sling carries allows hunters to use their hands 
sta when standing still. That is true. A good sight picture, place the front sight uh, exactly where you want the bullet to hit the target. That is correct. To examine the barrel of a bolt action firearm, you need to remove the bolt and look down the breech. That is correct. I'm doing pretty good. I, I don't think I got any wrong so far. Is it safe to store ammunition in a tightly sealed metal container? I'm going to say no. Ammunition for a shotgun is called shotgun shell. Well, I was going to say slug, but that's not an option. A uh, 22 cartridge will not go further than one mile. I'm going to say false because I'm not sure. Uh, I can't remember the distance of how far firearms will go or what kind of ammo will go how far. Smokeless powder can be safely used in a muzzle-loading firearm. I'm going to say no. Shotgun shell has five basic parts. It does. I, I'm honestly shocking myself that I can remember most of these. Uh, multiple projectiles can be fired from a shotgun. True. Firearm barrel stamps include information of the velocity at different yards. No, it's not going to list a whole novel on the shotgun. Uh, ammunition, hands, ammunition head stamps are always found on the rifle and handgun cartridges and shotgun shell heads. Oh, I, I put uh, true. I should have known better. That actually was false. That's my bad. Pictured bullet is a, this is one that may get me because I cannot remember the names. I know it's not a full metal jacket. I know it's not a lead round nose because you can't see it. I'm going to say hollow point because it looks kind of hollow in here. All right. That one I did not expect to get. Name the four parts of a cartridge. Uh, you have the bullet, the powder. You have the primer, the case. Or is it rim? No, I'm going to say primer. Yeah. Uh, rifles and handgun can also fire cartridges that use a plastic capsule filled with small shot pellets. I'm going to say yes. Okay. That one uh, confused me for a second. Ammunition should always be stored in its original factory carton or box. Yes. Firing the wrong ammunition can lead to death. Serious injury or death. Okay. I'm getting these before even uh, seeing the, the questions. Ammunition should be stored where it, uh, sorry, in a cool, dry place. I was just reading them off there. A shotgun cartridge that files a single projectile is sometimes called a patch and ball. Oh, my bad. Uh, I hit true. It was false. Cartridges are classified into two main types, uh, center and rim fire, which is right. I almost hit on the wrong one. You can't really see the rim in this picture, but um, got them right at least. Which type of bullet is recommended for rifles? Rifles, rifles with tubular magazines, rounded, soft point. It can't be pointed. Okay. Uh, modern ammunition varies depending on the type of firearm. Rifles and handguns use a blank containing a single projectile and bullet. I'm going to say cartridge. Yeah, that was... You'll learn about this all in the course. The first step when cleaning a firearm is to make sure the firearm is unloaded. Prove it safe. Uh, when cleaning your firearm... Um, let's say all of the above because I mean you have to prove it prior to handling it. When cleaning your firearm, it is important to inspect for damage. All of the above again. All right. Firearms are so well made that slendom cleaning, slendom need cleaning. False. Okay. Uh, in Canada, is an individual required to have a firearms license always in order to operate a firearm? I'm going to say no, but you do to own one. In order to own a firearm, yes. I mean, I just answered that question prior to seeing it, so that's awesome. 
There's no limit on the number of magazines a licensed individual can possess. That is true. There is no uh, limit. Law enforcement and military personnel do not require a firearms license for their firearms they own themselves. False. I'm pretty sure they do. So, got it right at least. When transporting a non-restricted long arm uh, rifle or shotgun, which is the closest legal definition? I want to say it's, keep it simple, the firearm is unloaded. A suppressor is illegal in Canada. True. Fully automatic firearms are prohibited in Canada. True. Uh, what is the name of the government body in charge of lic licensing firearms in Canada? I don't know. Ministry of Justice Firearms Control? Okay. Uh, it was Canada's firearms program. I would not have been able to guess that. I, I am sorry. A license is required for individuals to purchase ammunition in Canada. That is true. Uh, all air guns are exempt from... No. You, from firearms licensing? No. Black powdered firearms are exempt? No. Uh, revolving actions are found as handgun? Yes. To load a new cartridge into a pump action, you must close the action. Yes. The action of a firearm loads, fires, and unloads the cartridge. Yeah. These are these seem easy, but I've also taken the course. When you're shooting, you should always wear eye and ear protection. All right. Um, I'm assuming that's the end of the quiz. It says I have 100% complete the quiz. Um, I was expecting it to say... You passed or failed, but I think I only got a couple wrong. There was a total of 52 questions. So uh, whenever I was requested to review this quiz and to see if this will help people prepare for the test, I will say absolutely yes. Um, the only thing is everything that is in this quiz, you will learn whenever you go and take the course. You do not need necessarily to practice and take quizzes prior to taking the course you need you don't even need to have any knowledge to uh, knowledge of firearms you've never you don't need to have to prior to this course of handle the firearm you don't need any of that because I went into the course not knowing anything about firearms having zero knowledge never handling a firearm before and I took the quiz I took the course over a year ago and I just took the quiz now and I remembered all of this stuff. Everything in this quiz that I just took that I answered correctly, I learned in the course. So this quiz here, it will help you prepare for the test if you have prior knowledge. But you're going into the course and you are basically going into the course to learn all of this stuff. So you're going to learn all of this stuff during the course. So is this quiz something that will help you with the course? For me, I'm going to say it's not necessarily going to help you because you're going to learn everything you need to know in the course and be able to take the quiz during the course. So this isn't really going to help you. If you want to brush up and see what you already know prior to taking the course, then absolutely. That's a whole different question to be asked. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's been over a year that I've taken the firearm safety course here in Canada for restricted and unrestricted. So thank you for watching this video. hope this has helped you guys understand a little bit about this quiz. And for more information, there is that video I uploaded last June talking about the restricted and unrestricted firearms safety course here in Canada. And I talk about more of the course in that video. So you can go and check that out. I'll leave that video linked down below. I'll leave the link to this quiz down below if you want to check it out for yourself. And I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please take care. Peace.